welcome back to the Bliss Bean. Yes, I did paint a wall of my room black. I actually painted multiple walls of my room black. I am in the middle of redoing my room. You're not gonna see much more than this though until about the end of the month when I put out my room makeover video. Anyways, something I've been learning a lot about lately is this concept called essentialism, which basically means doing more of what's most important to you and cutting out what isn't. So quality over quantity. I wish I had been introduced to this concept in high school because I was just, Whew. I was trying to do everything, fit everything into my day, volunteer for everything. Like in my freshman history class, I remember at the beginning of the year, the teacher was going over extra credit options like watching historical movies and then writing essays about them. And I remember just sitting there listening to her and getting so overwhelmed thinking about all of these projects that I was gonna have to do throughout the year because I couldn't imagine not taking advantage of an extra credit opportunity that was presented to me. However, as the year progressed, I realized it was actually a very easy class and I did not need extra credit So I would say that was when I kind of dipped my toe into essentialism for the first time So Greg McKeon wrote the book on essentialism L Literally he wrote the book essentialism the discipline pursuit of less So I guess you could say he's like the expert on this topic I put a library hold on his book and I should be getting it within about six months So luckily for me, he also has a class on Skillshare. So I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video this has definitely been one of the most life-changing classes that I've taken on Skillshare. So in this video, I wanted to share what insights I gained from taking this course on essentialism, what changes I'll be making in my life based on those, and basically you guys are gonna be my accountability buddies to make sure that I actually follow through with this. And if I don't, feel free to call me out and roast me as much as you want. I give you full permission. So McKeon, I feel like I'm writing a book report when I use his last name, Greg. Our buddy Greg says that every time you say yes, every single yes takes away from another experience. You don't just have like an unlimited reservoir of time and energy to pull from. And I think that is what I completely missed in high school. I just thought that if I was just more productive, if I worked harder, if I color coded my planner better then I could say yes to everything have my hand in every project and just do it all but I didn't realize that every yes that I said was also a no to things like getting enough sleep spending time with my family relaxing or working on things that meant a lot to me like the bliss bean so he asked the question what is something essential in life that you are under investing in and i think this can be a pretty uncomfortable question to answer because we'd like to think that we're investing enough time in the things that matter most to us but we're probably not so in my list i wrote meaningful friendships my blog and mental health and for each one you had to answer a couple of question so why does that thing matter to you what needs to change so that you are investing more time and more energy into it how much time will that take what will success look like once you've implemented these changes so this was really helpful because it's super easy to say like yeah mental health is important friends are important of course but like why are they important? So for mental health, I said that the only way I can do my best work and actually like enjoy the fruits of my labor and enjoy life is if I'm taking care of myself. Like nothing else really means anything if I don't start with that. So that's why that's essential. Then he asked, what are you over investing in? Now over investing doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad habit or you want to cut it out altogether. It's just not essential. So like I mentioned in my mid-year review video, yeah, language learning is pretty important to me, but I don't have like an urgent goal. I'm not trying to reach fluency by some date. And so right now, I think I'm just investing a little bit too many of my productive hours into it. I'm over investing in responding to all Instagram comments and DMs, etc. Taking on photography or other freelance work that I'm not really excited about watching TV, scrolling through social media. So one thing Greg suggests is changing your vocabulary a little bit so that instead of saying, I have to dot dot dot, you are saying, I choose to because if I don't dot dot dot. So I choose to make weekly videos because if I don't, 
the bliss bean doesn't really exist. But with something like responding to comments, for example, so what happened for a couple of weeks was I stopped responding to comments because I had switched my channel to a brand account and doing that actually deletes all of the comments that you have left on your own channel. And I had been working so hard to respond to everything almost everything, as much as I could. And so it was really a bummer to lose all of that. And that just kind of left me with zero motivation to sit down and type out more comments. And guess what? Over those few weeks, nothing happened. No one actually reached out to me to be like, why aren't you responding to comments, hmm? Do we not matter to you anymore? And so, yes, I do want to engage with my audience. I want to answer questions. I want to encourage discussion in the comment sections of my videos, but I think I can add more value to your lives by simply making good videos. Like me just typing the generic, thanks so much for watching. I'm really glad you liked the video. Heart emoji, smile emoji, sunflower emoji. I don't think that adds that much to your life. Like, let me know if I'm wrong, but when I am responding to tons of comments, that really adds up. Whereas I could be using that time to make my videos better. And I think that's what you really come to the bliss bean for. There's a quote in this class that basically says, through essentialism, you can find your creative freedom to make a bigger contribution. And that Ooh, that really hit right there. Like, yeah, I can spend lots of time interacting with people through the Bliss Bean one-on-one -on -one, and yeah, that will help people. But the most impactful way for me to spend my time is in making videos. And in order to do that, I need to spend more time on the deep work, writing my scripts, taking my time with the filming, dreaming up new ideas for the Bliss Bean, rather than just sitting on Instagram, typing the same thing over and over again. So the next part of this class was probably my favorite where he talked about execution. So basically you have a list now of what is essential, what is non-essential, how are you going to pull time from this side to invest it into this side? And rather than just relying on sheer willpower and self-discipline, Greg suggests setting up your life so that it's easy to do what's essential and work to do what's non-essential. So for example, you can start your habit small so that you don't run out of steam, like reading for just 10 minutes a day. You can use a physical trigger to help you execute a new habit, like bringing your journal with you everywhere to remember to journal. You can set a routine so that you don't have to manually schedule your essentials every week, like going to the same exercise class every week. You can track your progress visually to motivate yourself. So I took some time to figure out what changes I'm gonna make, how I'm gonna execute those, so here's what I'm going to do to focus more on what is essential. So for meaningful friendships, I said that I wanna spend time with a friend, preferably outdoors at least once a week. I added it to my weekly planning routine to just check up on my calendar, see if I have things planned out for the next couple of weeks, and if not, think about what I could schedule, reach out to some people to set something up. I also have scheduled regular calls with some friends like every two weeks or so, so we don't have to go back and forth with the scheduling. It just is automatically on our calendars. Then moving on to my blog. So one of the questions in the beginning was, how much time would it take for you to feel like you were sufficiently investing in this essential area of your life? So I decided 30 hours. Now every week when I do my weekly review, and I'm gonna talk more about this in next week's video, but I like to check up on how how much time I've been spending in each of the main categories of my life. And for my blog, for the past few weeks, it's been like 27-ish, which has been kind of surprising to me because I don't really have much else going on in my life right now. So I figured, okay, it's like a full-time job, I guess. But yeah, it's been like between 25 and 30. So I feel like if I can get it up to 30, but also make sure that the majority of those 30 hours are actual meaningful, essential work, then I would be pretty happy with how much effort I'm investing into this. Right before I did this course, I actually finished reading Cal Newport's Deep Work, which I loved, by the way, definitely recommend. So in it, he defines deep work as professional activity performed in a state of distraction-free concentration that pushes your cognitive capabilities to their limit. And so I think essentialism and deep work are really intertwined because what is essential to you, you're gonna want to invest some really focused, effective time into it. And then distractions are those non-essential things and they get in the way of you doing deep work. So basically for blogging, I set aside time every morning to do some deep work. So that's writing, creating content, investing time into longer term projects, doing like the deep planning work, because I know that all of that is so much more valuable, so much more essential than just like 
checking emails and checking analytics. Also, if you're curious about how I time track, I have this video where I explain my time tracking system. And I also recently did an IGTV video because I kind of like reorganized my time tracking setup so that I can see how much time I'm spending on essential things and on deep work. So if you're interested in that as well, the link is in the description. Finally, for my mental health, I have been struggling a little bit with that lately. And so this week I was just like, okay, what do I know scientifically will help me? And what do I know about myself and how my mind works? So in terms of what I can add into my life, I know I need to spend more time outdoors. I need to get more sunshine because I'm not a vampire, but you might think it from how much time I've been spending indoors. I need to do something active every day, interact with people in real life, spend quality time with my family. So I've started one waking up at 5.30 every day because I just feel so much better when I have an early start to the day. And I've always woken up early. It's just been kind of inconsistent. And sometimes it would be more like towards 7 a.m. And I just consistently have better days the earlier I wake up to a certain extent. I also implemented a routine of going on a little 15 minute walk after breakfast every morning to get some sunshine, some movement, some fresh air. Also, it is way too hot to go outside to walk at any other time of the day. And I've saved some of my favorite yoga videos to my bookmark so that on days when I'm not doing intense exercise, I can still get some movement into my day without going through the whole YouTube rabbit hole to try and find a good video. So that takes care of making the essentials easy. Now, how do I make the non-essentials difficult. So first with studying Korean, this is not like a bad habit. I'm not trying to eliminate this. So all I'm going to do is simply reduce the number of hours that I spend on it. So on days that I read for an hour, which is usually Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, I'll shorten my Korean practice by an hour just to even things out. And next week, I'm going to try studying Korean after lunch so that I can dedicate my entire morning to deep blog work and we'll see how that goes. I'm just testing that out for now. With responding to Instagram comments and DMs and such, that's something that I've generally stayed on top of. It's something that I would usually do every single day. So I'm going to try doing it only on Wednesdays and Fridays and see if I can get it done more efficiently by batching it. Now, part of me was like, is that going to turn the Instagram algorithm against me if I don't respond to comments right away? And then I thought, am I really going to let the Instagram algorithm dictate how I live my life? I think the hell not. Okay, the next non-essential is internet time. So for this, I really pulled again from Deep Work by Cal Newport. I downloaded this tool called Freedom to limit my internet use to certain sites. So I have a list of permitted sites, which is what I need for language study, Google Docs, my to-do list, Google Calendar, things like that, nothing distracting at all. And then everything else, I just can't open it during a session. It just blocks me. And I've been loving this. So really what this is meant to keep me away from is Gmail, first of all, because so easily you can just be like, oh, I'm just gonna check this one email. And then as you're checking that email, you see another email and just the subject line of that email stresses you out and then you can't focus anymore. And then to Google, which really, really pulls you in. Like I would be studying Korean, for example, and I'd come upon a word and I just, I'm like, oh, I wanna see like what context that word is used in. And then you just fall down a rabbit hole of Google searches. So now if I think of something, for example, while I'm writing that I want to look up, now I'm forced to put a placeholder. So what I do is I type the letters TK. This is a little trick that I learned because TK is one of the least common letter combinations in the English language. So after you put all your placeholders in your document, you go control F, TK and it finds all the placeholders and hopefully nothing else in your document. And so then when you have internet access, you can go through and look up all the statistics and facts that you meant to look up. So what I've been doing because I'm so focused in the morning and I really wanna take advantage of that time is I've pretty much been spending my mornings without internet, just trying to crank out as much work as I can without needing to look up anything or reference anything. And then after lunch is when I'll fill in whatever internet knowledge I need. Okay, then with apps, Instagram, that's really the only social media that I use. And I don't use it that much, but I just 
really don't like the fact that it is so easy for me to click over to it. Like if I'm standing in line or something, I just go and start tapping, tapping, tapping through Instagram stories. So I am signing out of Instagram. I have a very difficult password. So now every time I want to get into my Instagram, when I need to post the daily photo or some stories, I'm going to have to go retrieve that password from my computer. I can't access it from my phone. And it's not that hard to go and get the password. Like obviously there's a workaround, but really what I'm trying to prevent is just that mindless use throughout the day. The Freedom app that I installed also works on your phone. So another thing I set it to do is to block Instagram and YouTube after 8 p.m. So we'll see how that goes. So yeah, those are all the things that I'm gonna be working on for the next few weeks. There were a ton of other things from that class that I didn't even have time to talk about, like how to say a slow yes, how to uncommit from things that you've already committed to, how to make space to focus on your essentials. So if you wanna dive deeper into essentialism and do it faster than reading the book, or if your local library is as overwhelmed as mine currently is, you can use the link in my description to get two free months of Skillshare Premium to give the class a try, and then maybe try some other classes as well. So as I was taking this course, as I said, I kept thinking back to things that I had learned in deep work and how they were all connecting to what I was currently learning. I think that's what's really cool about learning about productivity techniques and philosophies is that they all intersect and support each other so much. So the more and more you learn, the more connections you make, the more you can improve your life. I love the productivity category of classes on Skillshare. There's classes about how to study for exams, how to build habits, manage your attention, how to use specific tools like asana and notion. And then I always like to say that productivity is not the end goal, it's a tool to get to your end goal. So whatever your end goal might be, there are thousands of inspiring classes on Skillshare on photography, illustration, entrepreneurship, etc. So you'll find something for you. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get two free months of Skillshare Premium so that you can explore your creativity. I would love to hear in the comments as you're watching this video, what did you realize about what your essentials are? What are your essentials and non-essentials and what changes might you be able to make in your life so that you put less time into the non-essential and more time into the essential. You guys are gonna be my accountability buddies, keeping me accountable, and then I will keep you accountable by reading through the comments that you leave. So thank you so much for watching this video. Um, what do I normally say at the end of videos? Give it a like if it helped you, subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, and I will see you next week. Bye.